Hello everyone. Yep. Hello everyone. My name is Jose Cortez and I'm going to be presenting on the art and the life of Wilfred Lamb. Let's begin. So the early years. Uh, Wilfred Lamb, he was born on December 8th, 1902 in Sagao, La, Gran, uh, La Grande, Cuba. He was the eighth child born to Chinese immigrant father and a mother of African and Spanish descent. He was the eighth of 16 children. Uh, living in Sagao La Grande is credited with uh, impacting the art that Lam produced in his early years and as well as uh, for the rest of his career. His parents pushed him to study law and in 1916 he left to Havana, Cuba, uh, the capital of Cuba, and that was initially to study law. By 1918, Wilfred had begun to study art uh, at Havana School of Fine Arts because that obviously interested, uh, interested him more. And in 1923, he received a scholarship to study abroad in Europe, specifically Spain. And that year, he headed to Spain and he was 21 years old. This is a picture of him. Uh, he is probably around 25 to 30 years old. The uh, uh, exact date of the picture is not known, but uh, this is what he looks like. Lamb in Europe. So uh, Wilfred traveled to Spain and studied academic painting in Madrid. Uh, he also, um, or Spain has also credited him, credited with giving Lamb the ideas and showing him movements of modern art, different movements of modern art. Uh, he was a frequent visitor of art halls and museums all around Spain. And in 1931, uh, his first wife, Eva, and his son, uh, Wilfredo Jr., died, uh, during, uh, died due to tuberculosis. He expressed his various art pieces of a mother and a child after this had happened. Eventually, in 1936, uh, with some influences from some friends, he joined the Republican forces in the Spanish Civil War. Uh, once that didn't work out for him, in 1938 he fled to Paris, and this is eventually how he met Pablo Picasso through a letter of introduction that same year. Um, here are the paintings I was talking about. Uh, he uh, painted oil on canvas. Uh, as you can see, they both kind of depict a mother and a child. These are both painted after the death of his, his wife and his, and his firstborn. And this is a picture, uh, it's probably after 1938, that's uh, Pablo Picasso and uh, Wilfred Lamb. Um, as you can see, Pablo Picasso had a huge influence and um, introduced him to a lot of influential people. Lamb and Picasso. So, uh, Lamb met many uh, prominent artists and teachers through Picasso. Because, uh, because of this, he started to exhibit a modernist type of style. Um, it was also the time that he started to use a cubism technique. And uh, after meeting Andre Burton, which is uh, credited as the father of surrealism, um, Lamb became a member of surrealism, combining cubism and surrealism, which is really um, his brand of art. Uh, Non-Western art is said to be critical to his development. So as you can see here, uh, again, oil on canvas, but you can see the essence of cubism and of surrealism. Uh, this is two different paintings, if you couldn't tell. So, uh, returning to Cuba. In 1940, the Second World War uh, drove Lamb to Marseilles, uh, and that's where he joined a group of intellectuals trying to flee Europe uh, back to the United States, or anywhere except Europe. In 1941, he left France and returned to the capital of Cuba, Havana, and it was here that Lamb started to develop his signature style, which blends Cubism and Surrealism. It was during this time he developed his most famous art piece, and it's called The Jungle, and he painted that in 1943. Uh, this is a picture, uh, you can see Wilfred is a little bit younger in this picture. It's uh, kind of a rare picture because of the time that uh, he was living in, there wasn't too many cameras, so you could actually get a glimpse of what his art studio looked like. You could see some of his paintings, uh, they're a huge, and uh, you could see how he's combining all the different shapes. So his style. 
overall Lamb combined his radical um, modern his radical modern styles with that of a primitive style. He was very much influenced by Afro-Cubans at the time. You can see that in his paintings where um, a lot of the faces are African tribal masks. Uh, he deeply believed that society focused too much on individuals and individualism. Um, so his art shows a humanity at a, at a larger scale. Um, and, he and he painted masks to resemble that of African tribes. So like I was talking about, um, although he did do some portraits, um, what he really believed in was getting um, the bigger picture. So uh, he uses the African masks uh, to show a broader range of humanity, I guess you could say. Um, using Cubism, Modernism, and influences from some of the greatest artists of all times, Andre Burton, Pablo Picasso, he created some original masterpieces that are shown all over the world. This is his most famous piece, it's called The Jungle. It was painted in 1943. As you can see, it combines all, uh, it combines the surrealism, the, uh, the cubism, you can see um, both essence in that. If you look um, a little bit closer, you can kind of see uh, different faces in there that look a little bit like tribal masks. And uh, there's not one specific thing you can look at in this picture, which is what I really think he was trying to capture. On the left was an older Wilfred Lamb. And on, on the right, I'm pretty sure it's a middle-aged Wilfred Lamb. <coughs> so later in life, uh, following his return to Cuba, Lamb was in between New York City, uh, Havana, Cuba, and it, uh, Milan, Italy. In 1950, he, he was credited with the creation of Phasis Movement and the Situationists. Further in his career, Lamb work, uh, Lamb's work reflected a growing interest in printmaking, uh, newspapers, comic book type style. Uh, he collaborated with various poets and writers. And Lamb was between Paris and Albizola, Mar, Italy in his final days. Uh, that's where he set up a workshop and continued to paint and uh, create art until the time of his death. He, he died on September 11th, 1982, in Paris, France, and his work is still um, revered as masterpieces all around the world today. And I included this one because it's my favorite piece by him. It's called The Third World, uh, created in 1965. Um, as you can see, this was um, a little bit later on in his life, but uh, you can see the surrealism, the cubism, and uh, it's just, a, he's a very interesting artist. He's credited with uh, being very original, being the first of his kind. Here's my work cited, uh, and thank you for watching.